Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm a book-loving, notebook hoarding, reader and writer on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. And this is the Get Literate Podcast. On this podcast, we explore the power of leading literate lives. We talk all things books and reading, notebooks and writing, and everything in between to make our lives better. And no matter what better means to you, the pages inside books and notebooks can help us get there. So each week, we'll mix together books, notebooks, mindful practices, and creativity to cultivate a life we love. Now grab a notebook and your TBR list, and let's get literate. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Get Literate podcast. I'm here to share a quick introduction to the episode to come today. So each month inside of my Get Literate Patreon community, we choose a one word theme that guides our reading life, our writing life, and ideally our actual life too. You know, I believe in the power of bibliotherapy, the thought that books and notebooks can make our life better. And so each month we explore a theme through the books we read, the notebook prompts that we write about, and the things we do inside of our community together. This month, our theme is a good one. It's wintering. Wintering. The act of resting and recharging and renewing at this time of year, right alongside Mother Nature. So I have a bibliotherapy book calendar that I share each month with my Get Literate Patreon community. It has a book recommendation for every day of the month that embodies that theme. This month, I have 28 books to celebrate wintering, adult nonfiction, adult fiction, middle grade, young adult, and even some picture books too. I wanted to give you a glimpse into what the Get Literate Patreon community is like, but I also wanted to give you access to these 28 books that embrace wintering. I thought about recording an episode that just shared three of my favorites, but I've so enjoyed this wintering theme And I really love the idea of slowing down and resting and recharging at this time of year that I thought I would just put that episode freely available here so that you could listen. So what you'll hear next is the actual episode I shared at the beginning of February inside my Patreon community. I reveal the theme, I talk about why I've chosen it, and then I give you just a little bit of bookish inspiration for all 28 books shared. So it's my hope that you embrace the wintering theme in your own reading and writing and actual life, and hopefully add a few good books to your TBR stack this week. So without further ado, here is the episode. Hey everyone, Stephanie here with the big reveal for February 2023. It's the last Sunday in January. I hope everyone has had a wonderful month, that their 2023 year got off to a great start, and you enjoyed some reading that helped bring you a little bit closer to being authentically you. We had a great book club conversation about how are you really. I know we had some fiction reading in the group, especially that additional authentically Izzy book that seemed to be a hit with many that's still on my TBR list. So hopefully you had a wonderful January. Now thinking forward to February and what the word of the month might be to guide our reading and writing this month, I went something a little different. A little alternative. You know, when you think February, you think, oh, you think love, you think friendship, you think chocolate, you think romance. I didn't go there. (laughs) Last year we did self-love and I didn't even go there this year. The word I ended up choosing for February was a word that I actually heard way back last year. And I heard it when it was a little bit too late to make it a theme of the month at the time. And so I just tucked it in my back pocket. I kept it there. And now I think February is the perfect month to bring this word to life. Are you ready? 
The word is wintering. Wintering. So the idea of wintering is that we follow the seasons. And when we think about the seasons, we know that nature follows this very predictable course. We've got, you know, this bright summer, we move into fall, we settle deep into winter, and then we emerge in spring, and then we do it again and again and again. Now, when I first heard the idea for wintering, it was put in a very positive stance. So this idea of using the winter to rest, to recharge, to reboot, to lean into whatever it is you have to lean into during this time where the days are shorter and the sunshine is almost non-existent, at least where we are in upstate New York. And it's just meant to show that we as humans can follow the cycle of nature and not always have to hustle, not always have to be on, not always have to do. We can take a break. We can take a break if nature can take a break. And if we can't take an actual break, we can at least give ourselves the gift of a little bit more rest. Now, when I was really leaning into this whole nature has seasons and why don't people have seasons, I learned something that I really did not know before. And I can't remember if I talked about it on the podcast or not, but it's still top of mind. And that is how the leaves change, at least in the Upper East portion of the United States. So here in upstate New York, fall is beautiful. The trees just have these really beautiful bursts of red and orange and yellow leaves. And it's just spectacular to look at. But what I didn't know is that that beautiful burst of color that we get right before winter is actually signaling that those leaves are dying. Something I found so beautiful was actually death in nature. And what happens is the tree is this big, bright, beautiful life force throughout the summer. But moving into fall, it knows it's not going to get the food it needs. It knows it's not going to get the chlorophyll it needs to survive. And so it has to let all of those beautiful green leaves go. And so the process of those leaves changing into beautiful colors is actually the tree slowly withholding that green chlorophyll and forcing it to change colors and basically die and fall off the tree so that during the winter, the tree can rest and recharge and take whatever it needs without giving to anybody else so that when the next season comes, spring, it's ready. It's ready to give back to everybody else again and let those beautiful trees grow those leaves so that it can happen over and over again. My mind was blown. I don't know why I'm 40 something and I'm just learning this now, but the fact that that beauty that happens is actually the tree letting go of something, it just blew my mind. And that's when I really thought, okay, I need to investigate this idea of wintering for humans. And so that's what I've been doing. It's been on my mind for a while. And I thought it's February. We are finally getting some snow and some winter-like weather here in New York. And so wintering, it is. But I do have a little disclaimer. For many of us, when we think of wintering, we think of the iconic book by Catherine May, which is a book of that very title called Wintering. And it's called Wintering, the Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. So I'm not saying that this is a difficult time for anyone. And I'm not saying that winter is difficult, but winter can be more challenging. You know, at least in where I am, the days are shorter, the sun disappears, we've got seasonal affective disorder, the kids are cooped up inside and people's frustrations can run high. Winter can be a challenge. But I don't want to look at wintering as a period of time where we rest and retreat because life is hard. I just want to look at wintering as a period of time where we rest and retreat because we deserve it, because we want to, because we we need to, because we want to follow the cycles of, of nature and figure out if that will make our life feel better and more 
almost said balanced, but we just had book club where we didn't use balanced. And now Amy W, I can't remember those two beautiful words that you used, but that we can kind of have this beautiful cycle over time. So when we look at the books that are on my bibliotherapy book calendar, which you know is my favorite thing to put together, I've got a couple of categories. I've got nonfiction to explore this idea of wintering and rest. I have some fiction books that are set in winter to keep us cozy. Some of those are romances. Some of those are just your typical literary fiction. And I do even have some mystery and intrigue there. I've got a couple of memoirs, a couple of picture books, a poem or two, and some middle grade and YA as well. I tried to really give a range of books here so that we could think of wintering as settling in and snuggling in with books where that have characters that are also settling in or snuggling in, or at least during this wintering time of year. Are you excited? I hope you're excited. This, this theme I've been looking forward to for so long. Okay, so let's talk titles. I already told you about the very first one. I had to put it on the calendar, the iconic wintering book by Catherine May. But I don't want us to frame wintering around rest and retreat in difficult times. I just want us to think about rest and retreat and the role that reading and writing and fueling our self-care and learning and creativity has in that wintering process. But of course, that book is on the calendar. The next nonfiction book I want to tell you about is one that I need, and it's called Just Sit, a meditation guidebook for people who know they should but don't. (laughs) That's me. I am hearing about meditation everywhere. I've got a really great morning routine, but meditation is just so hard for me to sit still. And so this book caught my attention. Just sit. And knowing what I know about a lot of people in this group, we've got a lot of Gretchen Rubin upholders. We have a lot of educators who are always on the move. I have a feeling Just Sit might be a book that all of us, or at least many of us in this group, need. Now, another nonfiction book focused on winter is called Winter Lust, Finding Beauty in the Fiercest Season by Bernard Brunner. And this book is a combination of narrative writing, but it also has pictures in there, and it kind of chronicles his exploration and his journey of taking pictures of like 5,000 snowflakes. And it's his experience in doing that, which seems really, really intriguing. Now I've got a brand new book out, just about brand new book out that I think would be really fun to explore. And that is called The Little Book of Self-Soothing, 150 Ways to Manage Emotions, Relieve Stress, and Restore Calm. It just came out in January, January 3rd of 2023, and it seems like if we're thinking about wintering, we're thinking about self-soothing, and what better way to kick off the season than 150 ways to help you do just that. Now, another book that seems really fun, this is on my TBR, along with so many, I have to get, I got to get that TBR down, but this was a book that came out in 2021. It's called DIY Solo Retreats, a handbook for creating your space, setting an intention, and getting the self-care you deserve. So it's basically about creating mini DIY retreats inside your own home, or at least locally, which seems like a pretty cool book to read when we're thinking about wintering, where we're trying to bring rest and retreat to ourselves during this time. So that's DIY Retreats retreats. And then the last nonfiction book I have to share with you, also brand spanking new, is out January. Oh, no, no, no. This one's not brand spanking new. This one was out January 5th, but 2021. Sorry about that. This is called 12 Tiny Things, Simple Ways to Live a More Intentional Life. So it takes us through these essential areas, space, work, spirituality, food, style, nature, communication, home, sensuality, creativity, learning, and community. And the book invites us to take one tiny action that will open up growth and renewal in each of those areas. It sounds a lot like to me the the little book of self 
soothing. So I'm, I'm kind of got both up in the air of which one do I go with first, a little book of self-soothing or 12 tiny things. You will have to help me decide. Okay, so those are the nonfiction books that can give us a base of what wintering is and what it could mean and what we want it to mean for each of us. Moving into some fiction books, these are books that are set in the winter season. So some of them revolve around the winter season. So think snowstorms and people all huddled up in nice little winter cabins and others might not really be relying on the snow in the winter aspect, but they're just set at that time of year, which can give you that kind of wintering vibe. So the first one that is so highly recommended, I have the book in my hands on my shelf, I just haven't read it yet, is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. If there was one book that everybody has recommended to read in the winter, it is this book. So this one is front and center on the calendar. Now the next one is one that I've had on my stack for a while and I'm not sure why I still haven't picked it up, but it's One Day in December by Josie Silver. And so it's definitely in the, the winter season and it's about this, I almost said couple, but it's about two people who meet very briefly kind of their eyes meet, and then they they spend the next year trying to figure out where these people are. And it follows the, the encounters and the friendships and the life events across these 10 years of friendship and heartbreak and missed opportunities and destinies and all of those things. And it follows them over time. And so one day in December definitely sounds like a great book to explore for wintering. Now I had to throw some Kristen Hanna in here. I actually have two Kristen Hanna books, but the first one I put in was The Great Alone. Now this is definitely a winter book because it is set in Alaska and it is all things winter, all things snow, but also all things difficult and challenging. So if we're going by Catherine May's definition of what wintering is, Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone brings that in a big way in this book. There's some trigger warnings with domestic abuse um, that you might want to know about, but it's highly recommended and is definitely one that is going to put you squarely into the winter season. Now, the other Kristen Hanna I put had to put on here is Winter Garden, much different book than The Great Alone and maybe one that you'd prefer to pick up, but it is a historical fiction book. Um, called An Epic Love Story by Amazon that's set in World War II Russia and is an intimate portrait of contemporary mothers and daughters poised at the crossroads of their lives. Now, I read not too long ago Terry Brown's Sunflower Beneath the Snow, which was this beautiful perspective book about mother-daughter relationships, among many other things. And this one reminds me of that. It has that tone of it. It's a historical fiction book. And so if you're looking for a different kind of Kristen Hanna, you might go with Winter Garden. Now, the next one that I've got on my list is a new author for me. It's by Ethan Joella, and it's called A Quiet Life, a novel. And it's set in Pennsylvania in the winter. And if you know upstate, eastern portion of the world, then you know it's, it's we get a lot of snow up here. And so this follows three people who are grappling with loss and are trying to find the other side of their grief. So it definitely does follow the traditional wintering theme as well. Um, it's got a lot going on in it, but I love the different perspectives and how they kind of converge in different ways at the end. That is always a book that I love. And so this is A Quiet Life. And the cover is beautiful. It's looking out the window at a very beautiful snowy scene. So you can't help but get that, that kind of winter vibe. Now, next up, another fiction book is called Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. This book is set in Vermont. 
which is also a snowy ski wintering kind of destination. It's a little bit different though for me. This says this book will shock you with a simmering psychological thriller about ghostly secrets, dark choices, and the unbreakable bond between mothers and daughters. So you know I love a family saga. And so the mother and daughter vibes really got me here. But it seems like winter people is definitely going to push me a little bit out of my comfort zone because there is some mystery around strange disappearances, old legends, maybe even a character who's found dead. <laughs> but if you are a mystery kind of person, that's what you likely want to do in the winter. You want to cozy in with the fire and read something suspenseful. I have a feeling that Winter People by Jennifer McMahon will do that for you. Now, the next book also has winter in the title. It's Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. Very, very highly recommended. It actually is the basis for a TV movie that I did not know about. And it's a story about five characters, both lonely and haunted in their own way. Um, and it's about their journey to find love and loyalty as they kind of come together as found family during the Christmas holiday. So I know the holiday has passed, but this was so recommended and took place in the winter season that I figured it needed a place on our calendar. Now I've got two more, two more fiction books that I want to share before I move to the next one. And the first book is called Five Tuesdays in Winter. And it's by Lily King. This is an author I've heard of, but I, I have not read anything by her yet. But it has these characters that, you know, just get into all sorts of situations and they come together in the end. And I know that I would love. So let me just read this one little paragraph to you because it really caught me. Told in the intimate voices of complex, endearing characters, Five Tuesdays in Winter intriguingly subverts expectations as it explores desire, loss, jolting violence, and the inexorable tug toward love at all costs. A reclusive bookseller begins to feel the discomfort of love again. Two college roommates have a devastating middle-age reunion. A proud old man rages powerlessly in his granddaughter's hospital room. A writer receives a visit from all the men who have tried to suppress her voice. Yeah, I, I'm just like, I need to read it. <laughs> I was sucked in because of that paragraph and knew I had to add it to my list. Now, I'm not sure too much of the winter vibes other than winter is in the title, but I just fell hook, line, and sinker for that publisher's summary and had to add it. Now, the last one on here, this one definitely got my interest. This is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Alice Feeney is so well-known and so well-loved, um, but I hadn't heard of Rock, Paper, Scissors before. Now, let me read this first paragraph to you. Things have been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, for a long time. When Adam and Amelia win a weekend away to Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. Self-confessed workaholic and screenwriter Adam Life has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize friends or family or even his own wife. Every anniversary, the couple exchange traditional gifts, paper, cotton, pottery, tin, and each year, Adam's wife writes him a letter that she never lets him read until now. They both know this weekend will make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying, and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ten years of marriage, ten years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. Ooh, this one sounds good. Definitely a, a book to snuggle in next to the fire with. Okay, so those are the fiction books that are set in winter or have some winter vibes. I want to talk about a couple more mystery and intrigue books. We already talked about a few of them, but I've got a couple on here that I don't know if I'm going to read, but I know some of you in the group would love. And the first one is a Reese Book Club pick 
from previous the previous year called the sanatorium. So this one sounds like a definite thriller for sure. It's this abandoned sanatorium that's been renovated into a hotel. And it's what happens in that hotel and with the characters that visit it. And it seems pretty haunting to me. <laughs> I mean, just the name, the sanatorium, but it's a Reese pick. And so, you know, it's going to have to be pretty good and pretty absorbing. Now, I also put on here Still Life by Louise Penny. A lot of us were talking about Louise Penny because her 18th book of the Gamash series, um, that's not the name of the series, but he's in it, um, came out. And I thought, what better way to spend wintering than jumping into that series if you haven't already? And I haven't. That doesn't mean you can't just read the 18th book. Louise Penny has been clear that you can. But if you're like me and would need to go in order in order to feel good and right with the world, then you might start with her first book, book one of 18, a chief inspector gamache mystery called Still Life. And who knows, maybe you'll keep going and get all the way to 18 in your wintering season. Now, I also put another book on here that's a bit of a thriller by an author that we've read before in book club. Remember the It Girl by Ruth Ware? Well, I put another one of Ruth Ware's books on here called One by One. And this is a book that takes place over in the French Alps and this beautiful uh, ski, ski chalet, ski something over there. Um, and it's about a weekend trip that starts out well, like a nice corporate retreat, but the snow comes and the snowstorm brings some devastating avalanches and lots of things happen. So if you're up for a winter book that is truly set in the winter and has some winter plot elements, and you like a little bit of mystery and intrigue, then one by one is one that you might pick up. And then finally, I had to put a classic on there. Everyone says to read Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express in the winter. And so it made it on our wintering calendar. Now what's left? I've got one poem book on here that I included, and that's Winter Hours by Mary Oliver, a poet that many love and adore. So I, I have her poems, which aren't necessarily about winter, but do have a, a little bit of retreating, resting, wintering theme in there. I've got a couple of picture books. You know, we love picture books in this group. We've got Ways to Hear Snow, which is this, oh my gosh, it's, it's a beautiful book. It was published in 2020. And it's about a little girl's trip to her grandma's and she wakes up to the sound of snow which you know basically is nothing it's a beautiful silence and she ends up going to her grandma's house to make the family recipe um that i i won't i, I won't pronounce it correctly but i think it's warak inab i don't know it is definitely a cultural dish and it's a beautiful book that celebrates winter and celebrates family and all of our family traditions we might have in the winter as well. We've also got a really great one that is a wordless picture book that I fell in love with. This was published in 2017 and it's called Lines by Susie Lee. Now I love Susie Lee and this book is about figure skating. I was obsessed with figure skating as a child. I mean, Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding, the Olympics. I was obsessed and I, yeah, I I could skate. I used to think, oh, I will be the next Olympian. Yeah, that obviously didn't happen, but I'm still obsessed. And I, I still watch them. And when I hear songs that I love on the radio, like I, I imagine what they would look like, you know, in a, a, a dance sequence out there on the ice. It's yeah, it's an obsession. And so Lines by Susie Lee looked beautiful and really celebrates the, the ice skating, the, the lines that we have on the ice in winter. And so, of course, that made it on my list. But I've also got The Snow Dancer. The Snow Dancer is a picture book published in 2020 by Addie Boswell. 
And the cover is just delightful. It's this little girl in this beautiful dancer's pose in the beautiful white snow. And it's all about her and going outside and what happens when the rest of the neighborhood wakes up and what a snow dancer actually is and what a perfect, beautiful day, a snow day can be. It's a, it's a lovely picture book. Now, I've also got two middle grade and YA books on there. I've got the first one is a middle grade book called Ruby in the Sky. This was published in 2020. Author is Jean Zulik Ferulo. And it's definitely got some meat to it. It's heartfelt. It's got family. It's got friendship. It's got finding your own identity, all hallmarks of a middle grade novel. But it's also got some big stuff in it. It's about 12-year-old Ruby Moon Hayes, who doesn't want her classmates to ask about her father. And she doesn't want them to know that her mother has been arrested. And she definitely doesn't want to make any friends because she doesn't want anybody to know what's going on. So she's in Vermont, where this is set, which is where the wintering piece comes in. And we find out what happens to Ruby. We find out what happens in school, what happens to her friendships, the people she meets, how those people are treated, and the, the ugly kind of rumors and even some microaggressions that swirl around in the midst of this snowy winter. So it's a, it's a beautiful middle grade novel, but it definitely has some deep themes. So I had to balance that with a really light YA rom-com called Snowed In. This book published a while ago, actually, 2007, but still highly recommended by Rachel Hawthorne, who is a, a prolific writer. And so we are just digging into her backlist a bit. And so her and her mother, or I guess I didn't even tell you who her is, 17-year-old Ashley and her mother are moving from Texas to the middle of Lake Michigan. So they're going from bigger city life to small town life, from hot weather to cold weather and icy island, only 30 people in her whole high school. And it talks about the journey that they're both on. And of course, a little bit of young love. Last up, I have got two more books to share with you. Two memoirs. The first one I want to share is called Skating to Antarctica. And this is actually a, a memoir by Jenny Diskey of her journey of, well, literally kind of uh, skating her way to Antarctica. I hadn't heard it before, but I always love a book where someone embarked on a project and then transformed themselves in the process and then wrote about it so we could learn. And this is exactly what Jenny has done. This next book also has done it too, but in a very different way, not a, not a physical kind of way. This one was just published January 24th of 2023. It's already a number one bestseller in what category? Knitting. I don't knit, but I am totally smitten with the summary of this book. The title is Unraveling. What I learned about life while shearing sheep dying wool, and making the world's ugliest sweater. <laughs> so this is actually a book that are that kind of started during the COVID quarantines. So Peggy Orenstein, who was a lifelong knitter, ended up taking her, her quarantine um, to the nth degree, right? So to, to cope and to figure out with what to do with all of these shifts that were going on in her life. She took her knitting background and decided to make a garment from the ground up, like literally shear the sheep, spin the yarn, dye the yarn, and then actually knit the sweater. And she thought that that project would, you know, not just help her process her creativity, but also her grief. She was getting over the recent death of her mother, the decline of her dad. Her daughter was getting ready to go to college. She was aging and that is not fun. 
And so she was hoping for those things going into the journey, but she says in, in the outcome, she ended up journeying into other issues of our time, like climate anxiety, racial justice, women's rights, the impact of technology, sustainability, and the meaning of home. This kind of book gets me jazzed up. A book where someone just took something they love, a passion they had, went all in, and then figures out their life in the process, <laughs> that's the kind of project I want. Now, mine will not be uh, knitting and, and shearing sheep, but I really love reading about other people's enthusiasm because it just reminds us to find ours. So I am really looking forward to unraveling what I learned about life while shearing sheep, dyeing wool, and making the world's ugliest sweater. Now, I've got to admit, I've got one more I wanted to talk about here that isn't on the calendar. And I didn't put it on the calendar because it didn't quite fit the theme, but it just came out. Some of us are reading it. And I think it's a great book to read in the winter so that you can figure out what you want to do in the spring. And that is My What If Year by Alicia Fernandez Miranda. I've talked about this book before. I loved it. It's a memoir about Alicia's year that she embarked on to complete unpaid internships in an attempt to figure out what if, what if I would have done that as a kid? What if I would have made a different decision? Where would I be? What would life be like? And instead of just sitting there with her friends over a glass of wine, pondering that question, she actually did it. She took some time off from her job. I know she can, we can't, but what I loved is that even if we can't just abandon our job for a year and get up and move to another country, the book makes you think of all of those little what ifs that you might do to bring a change in your life and look at life from the lens of an intern, from the lens of the beginner, which makes it easier for you to take chances on things that you might love, which might lead you to something amazing, just like this project and unraveling led to something for Peggy. So my what if year is one that I'm actually considering for book club. I'm going to put out a poll. My what if year is going to be on there. Unraveling is going to be on there along with one of the fiction books set in winter. And I'm going to throw it over to everyone to make the choice. I really love when we vote on it. It feels like a collective thing rather than just, oh, Stephanie wants to read that book. Although I will say, just so you know, some of the books in the future months I might pick because I actually might be able to get the authors to hop in to our Zoom call. Can you imagine? I'm so excited. So in that case, we might not be picking. I just might be choosing because I don't want to pass up that opportunity. So some really good, cool, amazing conversations are happening for the future inside Get Literate and for our book club. All righty, there you have it. How many days in January? 28, right? 28 books plus a bonus book to help us rest and retreat in this wintering season. I hope you love them. I hope some of them have piqued your curiosity, are going to end up on your TBR list. Remember the printable that I put inside of our Patreon post is clickable. So you can open it up, browse the covers, click on it, and it'll take you right to Amazon so that you can read all of those details. I can't wait to see which books we pick for a book club. So you know how I'm going to end. Happy reading and hopefully get ready for some happy, happy wintering. See you in the next post. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode of Wintering Books inside my Get Literate Patreon community. If you loved what you heard, if you think that the Patreon community might be something that your reading and writing life needs next, then you can learn more by going to getliterate.co. You can browse all of the previous posts. You can sign up for a free week to make sure it's something that you want for your life. And then after that, it's only $5 a month. 
each week. There's a bonus podcast episode, a first chapter Friday that gives you a glimpse into a new book to head into your weekend with, book clubs, notebook inspiration, live events, and more. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you inside of the Get Literate community too. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. And if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing lives, like bonus podcast episodes, book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking challenges, live events, giveaways, and much more. It's only $5 a month, and you get instant access to all the previous content, too. You can learn more at getliterate.co. But one more thing. If you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you.